Howdy guys and gals, welcome back to The Social Regressive and we're getting back to form talking about practical products. And this is one that I think a lot of you guys are going to be very interested in. I know I sure am and I can't wait to see what's inside this box, this care package from Horace. You've heard me talk about Horace in the past if you've been on this channel for a while. Uh, some of you have been able to use some of these products, some of these reticles, and some not. I'm going to describe why this thing exists, why Horus is such a big deal. Uh, a typical deer rifle is going to have a scope on it with a crosshair. That's how most of these are set up, and probably crosshair scopes are still the most prevalent ones out there. You're going to find them at every Walmart, every sporting goods store. They're just all over the place. Everybody makes one. It just gives you a single point, you know, just a little, couple little index vectors, and that's going to be where your bullet is going to hit at 100 yards if there's no wind going on. But what if you have a longer distance or a shorter distance? Or what if you have a lot of wind? Uh, what if you have distance and wind? What if you're dealing with a whole lot of drop? Well, then you need something that's going to give you a little bit more information than a crosshair can provide, especially if you want to take a quick shot. Yeah, maybe you can uh, fiddle around with your dials and you can get it you know, actually dialed in where it's going to hit, and that's fine. But what if you could do it more quickly just by seeing it through the reticle? This is a mill dot reticle, and as soon as I saw one of these, I knew I had to have it. This gives you more points of aim, so if you are dealing with targets at different distances, you don't have to adjust the scope. All you have to do is just use one of these dots to aim instead. So if you are adjusting for drop, you just hold up a certain amount. Uh, based on a chart that you create yourself, and then you might have uh, windage as well, so you can hold off that number of dots. And as you can see, when you really get into holding off quite a bit, this gets to be pretty difficult. And this is where Horus comes in. Horus has this reticle, the H59, and as soon as I saw this, I knew I had to have it in my life. Uh, this is a reticle that, after you know a lot of varminting and other kinds of shooting that I've done, um, I figured this would solve a lot of the problems that I had where, you know, maybe holding off at extreme distances, maybe I have to get on a target really quickly, don't have time to fiddle with turrets, uh, that I'd be able to very quickly find the perfect dot for hitting my target at long range. And yes, it works exactly like that. The Horus H59 is an amazing reticle. But then they came up with something else that was completely revolutionary even beyond that. We're talking about the Tremor 3 reticle. Uh, they've had some uh, other Tremors in the past. There's a Tremor 2, Tremor 3. Now they have a Tremor 5, and what this does is it adds windage dots. So you kind of have the Horus H59 with all of its information, and then you have special dots that, as you can see, they spread out as drop increases. So really, to make a precise shot on a target, especially quickly, all you have to know is your drop value. So if you know where your bullet comes in, like say, you know, maybe you have a, a three milliradian drop at a certain distance, and you know that you have a wind coming in that's four miles an hour from, say, the right side, then you can hold off that little amount. You can use that dot it, uh, with a, a typical cartridge like 308, 6.5 Creedmoor. Usually these dots represent about four miles an hour of wind. You hold off and you make the shot. And now, Horus has been making these reticles for other people for a very long time, but usually they keep their own scope in their own catalog if you want to pick up one of those, and you can usually get whatever reticle you want inside those. And they have kind of come back to that right here with the Horus HOVR. I'm going to call it the hover for the rest of this. Uh, they have a, a new rifle scope that looks like it is going to be excellent. We're going to find out here in testing, but today we're going to take a, a quick look at how it works. And not only is there a scope in here, but there are some other tricks. Let's take a peek inside the box. Thanks a lot, Horus, for sending this out to me. They knew that uh, I had tested some of their reticles and other scopes in the past. And I think they were kind of happy with the coverage that I gave on the, the Tremor, uh, Tremor 3 reticle. So if you want to check out the, uh, the Tremor video that I did to see how it works actually out in the real world, uh, go check that video out. I'll put a link around here because it is really darn cool. Um, and it really does work. It's, it's like magic. Okay, so first off, here is the scope. But then this is a special package that you can buy uh, from Horus. And I think this runs, uh, I'll put the exact price, but it's somewhere around 1500 bucks, I think, for the three of these. Uh, you get the scope, which I'm imagining is going to be a very uprated one. And then we have 
a, an anemometer, which is going to, uh, it's well, it's actually a whole weather station. This is going to collect all kinds of information. We'll be able to test this out in the field. So yeah, it's going to pick up your wind speed. It's going to get temperatures. Uh, I'll be curious to see what all this can do, if it, uh, it is an altimeter sort of thing. And then we have a laser rangefinder as well. And the cool thing about this system is that these all connect to each other. And I'm really curious to see how this is all going to work out together. I haven't really read much on this yet, but we're gonna figure out how it works together. Uh, you can see that it has a Bluetooth connectivity. All of this data gets fed into your mobile device. It all kind of combines and tells you your exact shot solution. And you can see that with this guy, up to 2000 yards of ranging with this rangefinder. Okay, this is gonna be so darn sweet. I cannot wait to test this out in the real world. But let's just take a quick peek at everything that we have here, starting with the scope. Uh, this is a five to 20 by 50, so it's going to have a rather uh, large objective lens. It should be able to collect uh, quite a bit of light. It should have a lot of clarity going on. And it's actually pretty compact. Okay, I got a couple little smudges there. Um, but yeah, that's that's not huge. This is a, a 30 millimeter tube on this. This is not a big old 34 or anything. All right, so we've got kind of a bikini cover, single-sided to protect the lenses. I dig that. Objective, ocular, and it looks like this has a fast focus. Yes, but it's nice and firm. I like that. Some of these fast focus eyepieces can uh, turn a little bit easily. I like these ones that, uh, that are a little bit on, on the firmer side, so they're not actually accidentally going to spin when you're out in the field. The zoom ring doesn't have a, a great big lever for you to grab onto, but it does have this uh, little nerdy right here, this little speed bump, and that's quite positive. Okay, now this is pretty stiff to turn. It's cold in here, so that might be part of it but it feels very, very smooth. Nice job on that, Horace. Yeah, everything feels very precise. It's gonna hit the spot that you want just right. And uh, the knurling on here is a, a good feel as well. It, it grips really well. Here's our side parallax adjustment. And this goes, let's see how far down this sucker goes. Okay, 25 yards, not bad. For a, uh, a tactical scope like this, 25 yards is close enough. That is plenty out to infinity. Okay, so this really has the exact same feel between these dials. Sometimes you get some that feel a little bit different, uh, but this one has a good firm feel to it. It's not going to accidentally drift off. Everything about it just feels very smooth and precise. Let's see where this thing is made. Ah, just as I thought, made in Japan. These guys, they really know how to put together a scope. They know how to make precision instruments. This feels wonderful. All the little, uh, all the little knurling, all of the, uh, the machining through here, it all feels very precise. And just that little bit radius, little bit smooth, this feels like they put some real work into it. The turret here is a little bit of a surprise. Check this out. It goes, this is all milliradian all through here. So this goes from zero, and you can see coming around on the other side to four. So we have five milliradians all the way around. A lot of the, uh, the modern ones have 10 all the way around. This one is four, and it looks like they've done this to uh, kind of simplify and make things a little bit smaller. So this is a lower profile scope than you're gonna get with some of your, you know, just gigantic tactical scopes that we have out here with huge knobs. Uh, this one I think is gonna be a bit easier to drop onto uh, a long range hunting rifle, one that you can carry around out in the woods uh, without a whole bunch of stuff clacking around and it doesn't feel like it's extremely heavy. We'll do a comparison here in the future talking about what the, uh, the weight is compared to others. But this feels like a pretty practical scope, one that you could actually haul around pretty easily. Here, let me move the microphone so you can hear this a little bit better. Listen to this. very precise. You get a, a little bit of a click in the sound, but mostly it's a feeling. It just pops from one spot to the next without feeling like you're up against a wall each time. 
Love it. Love the feel of this. Love the sound. This is very precise. And one of the benefits that you're going to get from having fewer milliradians all the way around is it's going to be easier to see where you hit your mark. Look at the difference between 0 and 0.1 it's actually a pretty big gap. So if you want to be extremely precise, this may be a little easier to work with than some of these that have 10 all the way around. Now this, I was not expecting this. The side adjustment is actually capped. Okay, so this still feels really good. Oh yeah, very precise, great clicks. Oh, they have nailed this. This has a wonderful feel to it. This feels very, very well put together. This is something that's very special indeed. Uh, but, it, okay, you might be wondering why in the world would they hide this under the cap? Aren't you supposed to use that windage knob to adjust for wind? No, not with this scope. And that is a very good thing. Remember, I was talking about those, uh, those tremor reticles? I requested one with either, I asked them, please send me either the Tremor 3 or the Tremor 5. And it looks like we have the new Tremor 5. The Tremor 5 takes all of the capabilities of the Tremor 3, including those wonderful wind dots, and it gets rid of a little bit of the clutter. It removes a couple of extra things. So especially those ranging lines that you get up above zero, the things that most people really aren't gonna use, it removes those and gets rid of just a little bit of the stuff, makes it a little bit of a, a cleaner interface. I think this is going to be an excellent reticle for a lot of you guys. That's the scope. If this performs out in the wild the way that I expected it will, this is going to be one of my favorite scopes of all time. Everything about this is shaping up immediately uh, to feel like it is perfectly squared away. Uh, one thing to take note of here, you're gonna see that we have two screws. There's one on each side of, uh, of this cap here. So that's how you're going to uh, disengage this and be able to set your zero. A little bit different than the usual three, kind of interesting. And maybe in a second here, we'll take a look at what's under here. But let's see what else is in the box. It looks like they have thrown in a polishing cloth for the lenses, very nice. Okay, and a wrench for that turret cap. We have an instruction manual, and I've, I think I've seen one of these instruction manuals before. Yeah, this is really nice color, and it's gonna go through uh, not only what each of the features is, but it actually gets into, okay, yeah, how to, how to set windage, how to set a zero. The one thing that it does not have is it doesn't really get into details about the reticle and how to use it. And I think a lot of that is because there are some really great utilities on their website. Please go to their website. If you are at all interested in figuring out how to use a reticle like this, go to horusvision.com. They have all kinds of information about the reticles, but more than that, they actually have reticle simulators. They have video games that you can play. And they don't work on uh, some cell phones, as I've heard from some folks out there, but uh, if you're on a desktop or if you're on some of the, I guess, some of the major phones, I don't think it works on iPhone right now, something like that, you can check it out. But they have actual reticle simulators that uh, it'll give you a target, it'll give you the chance to figure out the distance, it'll, I guess it'll tell you what the distance is, it'll indicate what the windage is, and then you move the reticle to the appropriate spot using the wind dots, take the shot, and it'll show you if you made the hit or not. And based on my own testing with the Tremor 3 in the past, it's totally realistic. That is exactly the way that it works. So if you want to get a hang for, you know, the hang of the reticle, give it a test before you buy. You can actually, yeah, drive before you buy. Okay, so some of the other stuff that comes here, let's check out the rangefinder. I actually had no idea before this that, uh, that Horus had come up with a rangefinder as well. Okay, got a little lanyard for keeping it attached. There's the battery compartment uh, cap right there. We will figure out what that is. Okay, nice little case so you can keep it attached and it's it has a magnetic flap, so that's really cool. Lens cloth. Uh, neck lanyard. Uh, interesting, okay, so we have the system ID. Uh, I'm guessing that this is going to help with connecting it to the iPhone or other mobile device that we're gonna use. The usual two button interface, we have mode and range. And this has 
kind of a slightly rubberized uh, coating to the whole thing. That's probably for armor in case you drop it, and it's also going to aid in traction, especially when uh, the temperatures start dropping. It looks like a really cool device. So yeah, again, we're gonna see how this actually functions out in the field in another video. But uh, I love the design. I like the gold and all that. It's all, it all kind of plays together really well. Very cool design. All right, and finally, we have the anemometer, the actually the weather meter, they're calling it. So this is gonna do quite a bit. We have a user manual at the bottom of each of these boxes to tell how these are gonna work. Magnetic case again. Okay, this uses triple A's. And let's see what a little breath is gonna do. Oh, look at that. Okay, this seems uh, very well set up. Good bearing in there. It feels like it's gonna be able to grab a very low wind. So yeah, there's the Hover 1.0 weather meter. So it looks like we're gonna have, okay, wind. Oh, barometric pressure. Altitude, okay, cool. So this is gonna be able to get temperature and everything. Oh man, I can't wait to see how all this works together. Again, we are going to test this in either a video or a couple of videos to see how all these function. But I am imagining that uh, all this stuff, it's gonna be like this, this kind of perfect complete package where you're not gonna have to, you know, translate data from one thing to another. You're not gonna have to mix and match everything into one system. You're gonna get the app that comes with this. It's all gonna connect. You'll get your solution. You can take your shot. One of the great things about all this though is that if you have to estimate your wind looking through the scope, you know, by reading some of the cues that you have out there, the scope by itself really gets the job done. You can actually use this for ranging and we're gonna talk about that in some future videos. But uh, if you do have everything at your disposal for a shoot, I think that this is going to be just a wonderful package, especially for you guys that want to get into long range shooting for the first time. I just took the scope off to the side over here to give it a look, see what the glass is actually like. I got my diopter set and oh my gosh, is it good. It looks like they have this set up perfectly. The, even at some of the, uh, the higher uh, magnifications, the eye box is very forgiving. It's very easy to get behind there. There really isn't much tunneling going on. You just get this huge image and it looks like the resolution is going to be pristine, edge to edge all the way across. Now we're gonna see how this holds up as we start to track uh, through some of the extremes of the range. Uh, sometimes scopes can lose some resolution up there and down there, but based on what I'm seeing so far, I'm expecting this to just blow most of the scopes that I've tested out of the water. This seems to be set up extremely well. So if you wanted to purchase just the scope, it's kind of its own, kind of built-in calculator. It has a lot of that stuff already built in. So if you just want to use the scope, it's going to be a great choice. But then if you do want to have the all-in-one package to be able to make sure that you hit your ranges precisely and you're getting some information about your local uh, barometric pressure and other things, then this, this package, I think, is going to be extremely good value for money. Yes, it's a little bit on the expensive side, but if you have that expensive uh, rifle that you've intended to do precision work with at any distance, I think this is gonna be a really great match for you. Thanks a lot for watching, you guys. Make sure that you share this video with your friends that might be interested in precision shooting. Subscribe, and especially hit that notification bell down below. That's a big deal. YouTube doesn't like this information getting out, and that's your best shot to be able to see when the actual test videos come out there. I intend to test this in more of a lab sort of setting. It's not a lab, it's my garage, but I'm gonna test its tracking. We're gonna test uh, how its glass functions, how good the resolution is, how well it reproduces color, and then we're gonna get out in the field and see how it practically works. And based on what I'm seeing so far, I expect this to just destroy a lot of the other things that I've tested. I've tested some really great scopes around here, but I think that this is going to be an absolute monster. We will see. And, you know, especially considering that it's a 30 millimeter tube and not one of the, the bigger ones, I'm pretty shocked so far. That eye relief is just nuts. Very easy to get behind. 
And uh, yeah, I think it's going to be working great. So thank you to patrons of the Destructive Arts for making videos like these possible. We have Sportsman's Guide, Stan and Mary, and we have Tyler at the 330 at Lapua Magnum level. We have Joseph Davis, Howard, Mr. No Name, and Peter at the 300 Win Mag level. And we have a bunch of other dudes that are chipping in a buck or two a month to see more reviews like this. And if you would like to see uh, more content in this area, uh, please can consider chipping in that buck or two a month as well. I'll put a link to Patreon around here. See you all around. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.